All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I recognize that everybody's got a busy day and want to thank you guys for taking the time out to uh, join us for uh, this webinar here. Um, this is uh, Obsidian Financial Services, and we want to talk to you about partnering with us, uh, potentially joining our team here. Uh, my name is Andre Neuendam. I'm actually the Senior Vice President of Operations at Obsidian. Normally, these are conducted by uh, Ray Motes, our president. However, he's out, so I'm going to be stepping in, in his place. Hopefully, can do as good a job as he does here in presenting this to you. Uh, first, wanted to start out, just make sure everybody can hear me and um, that you can see my screen okay. Um, if anybody can just uh, raise their hand or say something in the chat, let me know you can see my screen. Um, all right, great, Jeff. Thank you so much. All righty, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so this is a career presentation, obviously, uh, about joining Obsidian. Um, we want to welcome you guys and thank you very much for taking the time again. First, we're going to discuss who we are as a company, uh, what it's like to work with Obsidian, our different channels that we have for origination for you, how you get compensated with Obsidian, and then also the next steps. So basically letting you know if you decide that you do want to move forward with us um, immediately, how you can go ahead and get a hold of a recruiter and, and start that process. If you have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat room. Uh, we have the microphones uh, disabled as well as the cameras, so we will respond at the end of the presentation. So any questions that come up as we're going through things, just feel free to go ahead and start putting them in there, and then I'll come back at the end and answer those for you. All right, first of all, who we are. Uh, Obsidian Financial Services, Inc., we were started in 2016. We are a fully delegated correspondent lender. Obsidian is currently one of the fastest growing lenders in the country. Uh, we're dedicated to growing our workforce in 2022 and beyond. We're at over 300 loan officers now. We'd like to keep adding to that. Uh, we're headquartered in Melbourne, Florida, and we are currently licensed in 32 states with more coming in 2022. So we have applications in 10 additional states right now um, that we hope we will be able to uh, bring on board here pretty soon. So questions you should always ask if you're looking for a company, if you're starting your career in the mortgage industry, um, everybody that's you know, been a veteran or, or pretty much knows a lot about the mortgage industry understands that time is everything. How quickly can you get your loans underwritten? How quickly can you get your loans closed? Most importantly, how quickly can you price and lock a loan and maximize your income? So those are some of the things that we are going to discuss in today's meeting how this works with Obsidian as opposed to other uh, lenders or brokers. So the one thing that you're going to find out working with us is that number one, we have the ability to process, underwrite and close mortgage loans in our own name. We are a full Eagle, full Eagle uh, designated lender, which means we can do FHA loans all the way from application to funding. We originated and closed over 500 million in loans last year. We're going to do even more than that this year. And we can broker it over 100 lenders who partner with Obsidian via a proprietary agreement that we have with them. Um, our underwriting team and our processing team have been with us for a very long time. Obsidian itself started in 2016. We were another company prior to that. That company was purchased. Um, but the underwriting and the processing team has been with us through every iteration of Obsidian. So they have been with us for 25 years. So very, very experienced, dynamic team. So what does that mean for you? Obviously, that means you have a lot more options with us than you probably do with a broker or potentially some other lenders out there. So let's talk first about compensation, correspondent lender versus broker, versus broker compensation. Why can you make more with a correspondent lender that you can 
you know, currently brokering loans. Well, here's some of the reasons why. As a mortgage broker, your comp plan is usually between 2.5 to 2.75 period. By law, the max a broker can charge is 2.75. On the correspondent lender side, the mortgage banks and correspondent lenders do not have to reveal their comp plan because they use their warehouse lines of credit to fund the loan. So that means we have a back end and a front end, a ceiling and a floor, basically. So, um, you know, you're going to be able to make money not only through the correspondent side on those channels, but you'll also be able to put money up front or make money up front if you need to, which means your compensation is a lot better. Mortgage bankers use their own money to fund loans. So in other words, you're funding an obsidian's name. It's not like working for a broker where you've got, you're sort of at the mercy of whichever lender it is that's handling the loan and the loan process, the process and the underwriting. Under federal law, if you use your own money to fund a mortgage loan, you do not have to disclose the comp made on the loan. So mortgage bankers normally have substantially higher comps than mortgage brokers. You're going to see that today. So again, mortgage brokers are limited on how much of their compensation can be, how much their compensation can be, but not correspondent lenders. We're not limited. Mortgage company compensation plans is what determines rates for the customer. So what does that mean? That means that you are in control. You decide how you want to structure your deals. You decide what you want to make based on what's on the back end and what you want to disclose on the front as a correspondent lender. So there's always going to be money there. So it's just a matter of deciding how much do you want to take out? What's the uh, consumer appetite for the rates that you're putting out there? And how much rate do you want to eat in order to be able to be competitive? So that's one of the options that you're going to have as a correspondent lender that you will never have with a broker. Correspondent lenders use their own warehouse lines of credit to fund loans. So we have our own warehouse lines. We don't have one line. We have three lines. So we have three different banks that we can basically shop loans to. Every banker you'll find out has their own terms on what they're going to allow to go through the line. It's not dependent on the investor buying the loan. It's really dependent on the bank that is funding it. So while the investor might say, hey, I'll take a 500 credit score, the bank might say, no, nah, it's got to be a 580 on an FHA. We just won't do that. So we have those options available to you that, you know, if you are having an issue getting a loan through a particular bank because the terms that that bank has might be a little bit more stringent than another line, we can just move that on to another line and still make that deal work. But we also understand that there's going to be some circumstances where you're still going to need to broker. And that's the beauty of Obsidian. With Obsidian, you can be a lender and a broker. So we're not about forcing our loan officers to fit a square peg in a round hole. Sometimes your deal's not going to work on the correspondent channel. The rate's not going to be as good. It might be a program that's not available, um, delegated or non-delegated, or maybe there's no bank that'll take the deal. That's not a problem with us. You're still going to be able to go out and broker your deals. We're still going to give you the max broker comp of 2.75, and we charge some of the lowest fees against that in the industry. So you're still going to be able to make money, and you're still going to be able to compete across the board. Then with Obsidian, you also have three channels that you can actually originate loans with. So we actually have our delegated, we have our proprietary channel, and we have our wholesale, which is the broker channel. So, you know, if you're working on delegated proprietary, obviously you're doing everything internally in-house with us, with the exception of the underwriting. Um, you'll, you know, underwrite with us internally on the delegated, on the proprietary, it'll be the investor doing the underwriting, and on the wholesale, they're pretty much in control of the deal. But you'll still have our internal processing team to work with you on uh, structuring your wholesale deals and getting those going for you. 
So we do a lot of that work for you up front as a loan officer. Our goal with you is to get you out there, get you building those referrals, building that pipeline, doing the minimal amount of work as you can, training you so that you really understand correspondent lending, all of the products, all of the investors, everything else. We really want you guys to grab that, but we also want you to be able to go out there and spend most of your time selling you know, building those really the relationships and everything. So we're going to make sure that when you're working with us, that your milestones are going to be met with fast turn times and maximum efficiency. You know, so our process is going to work hard to get your files going, our underwriters. We've got some of the best underwriters. Every underwriter we have has 20 uh, years or better experience. So they know the products. They know how to get deals done. They know how to structure loans. All right, so when you're going delegated with us, obviously the company has the ability to underwrite the loans in our name. So all of your docs, everything are drawn in the Obsidian name. We close the loan. We can price the loans in-house. So in most cases with better pricing than going non-delegated or brokering. Again, the reason why we can do that is because we're the ones setting the margins. So, you know, if you have a uh, pricing model that's not necessarily working for your deal, you have the opportunity to come back to management and say, hey, you know, um, I need to shave, you know, 25 bips off of this deal, off the margins on this deal to make it work. You know, I mean, we still want you to make money. The company obviously has to make money, but some deals are not going to fit, you know, into the guidelines of what the pricing for that deal might be. So with us, because we're not holding you to anything, again, because we are correspondent, we have the ability to customize the pricing by decreasing or increasing margins to make that deal as effective as possible and win that deal for you on your behalf. It doesn't happen often. Our pricing is good enough that we generally don't have to do that, but some deals are just too good to walk away from. Everybody knows that. So when it's that type of a situation, we are going to work with you to make sure that you are going to win that deal, regardless of what channel it's on. We never have a compensation plan unless you broker. So you're not going to be stuck on a comp plan, whether you go delegated or proprietary non-delegated. Okay, what you see is what you get. What you see in pricing, and I'm going to show you that, is what you are going to make on the deal. That's the beauty of correspondent lending. You pretty much control your own destiny there. Now, if you go proprietary, the company that's basically sort of working as a broker and a lender simultaneously. What does that mean? The UW, the underwrite is done by the lender of your choice. So you're basically going to go out there, you're going to price the loan, you're going to do all of that stuff. We're still going to draw docs and everything, but they're going to underwrite the file. So we'll process it in house. We'll do all of those normal things that you would see as a broker. But the closing is going to be done by the lender. The pricing is going to be done with the lender. So you're going to lock in price with them. That's going to be done. You could still price on the proprietary through our pricing engine. So you'll actually see what the pricing is and you'll see what you're going to make on the deal. Um, and then you're going to lock track and handle all the pricing with that lender. There is no compensation plan. Again, working the proprietary channel. It's, it's all built in just like we explained in the correspondent side of things. So the only difference between proprietary is that they're going to underwrite. Everything else we're going to do just like we normally would on the delegated side of things. So um, you're still fully in control. And our processing team is still the ones, the, the processing team we assign you to is still going to be the team that's going to handle all of this for you. And then, of course, brokering, the most popular option in the mortgage market. They're going to underwrite. They're going to close the loan in their name. They're going to price the loan. You have to lock the loan with them, make sure that the lock doesn't expire and track where the loan progress is. If you've been a broker before, you've already been through that process. Again, our in-house processing does a lot of the work for you. So really, the only thing that you're responsible for is, you know, your, your fee sheet, um, getting the lock 
taken care of and signing your disclosures. We upload the file for you. We upload docs. We work with the AE at the other company, get all of that done for you. Again, our focus is getting you out there selling. So the next thing I want to explain is compensation, because for people that haven't ever worked in correspondent lending before, the compensation is a little bit more difficult to understand than just a, a flat rate comp pl pl plan where you're, you're pricing a deal. You know you're going to make the 2.75. Um, you're going to give your borrower a specific rate. But we're not, we're not like that, okay? With correspondent lending, you're going to have the options to be able to compete you're going to make the option the way that you want to make it you know based on what you can get best rate you can give your borrower and the best compensation that you can work for yourself so the company doesn't dictate the compensation you actually dictate the compensation that you want to make So let's talk about that a little bit. Compensation by channel. So again, you've got three different uh, compensation models based on whether you're going to go delegated, proprietary, or brokered. A lot of people wonder, how do I know which way I have to go on these? What, what am I going to do? It's really simple. Your delegated loans are your vanilla, um, QM, qualified mortgages, your proprietary are sort of your hybrids, uh, jumbos, things like that. And then your brokered are just the loans that you know, basically you can't get across the finish line on the, the non-delegated. Those are going to be things like, you know, manufactured, some manufactured home programs, you know, some specific DSCR, some bank statement programs, things that just don't fit or that the banks don't have an appetite to do, but there's lenders out there that will do that. And, you know, I mean, an example of that would be on our broker channel. We have uh, lenders that will do a 500 VA or a 500 FHA, they do manual underwrites. We don't do manual underwrites internally. Um, some of the non-delegated will do manual underwrites. So really what you've got again is options. You just have to understand what those options are. And based on those scenarios, you're gonna know which direction you wanna go, um, You know whether it's delegated, proprietary or brokered. So our delegated plan, we say, is the best pricing with no compensation plan. Again, it's what you see is what you get. The pricing is done through our lock desk, so you're locking it internally with our lock folks. They're going to contact the investor to lock it. Whatever is listed is what you're going to make on there. I'm going to demonstrate that here in a second. But, for example, if you see a par price of 103.5, par is 100.00. So everything over par is what you're going to make on that deal. There's not going to be any fees that are going to come out of that. It's already, all of that's already baked in for Obsidian. So when you see 3.5 over the 100 par price, that 3.5 is exactly what you are going to make. You are going to get a check that is going to reflect 3.5% comp on that deal. There's not going to be any fees coming out of that. You get to decide, hey, I want to give the borrower lender credit. If you want to do that, if you want to pay for their appraisal, any of those things you want to do, you can do that out of that comp. But if you are not doing any of that, when you see 3.5, that's what you're going to make on the deal. Again, with delegated, the borrower does not see the back end compensation. That's the difference between being a correspondent lender and a broker. You, as a broker, you have to disclose on your disclosures that 2.75. With us, you're only going to disclose what you're charging on the front. So if you've got, you know, a file where you don't see that you're making enough on the on the back, you can go and charge loan origination fees or discount points, however you want to structure that on the front and make that additional money. And it's still going to look like you're not making as much as you really are making because again, what's on the back end is not going to be disclosed there. So let me show you that for an example here. Are we use Optimal Blue for those of you that are familiar? Every single person that signs up with us will have their own Optimal Blue login. So you'll be able to go in here and price your scenarios and see exactly what it is. 
And one of the things that I like to emphasize with people, especially if you're coming from a broker, is you have to get out of that broker mindset that you need to understand every product or know every product that the investor has in order to go out and price something. That's not how correspondent lending works. You got to look at it from the perspective. If you work for Wells Fargo, for example, Wells Fargo has a list of products that they basically do and all you're doing is you're basically taking a borrower and seeing which product do they fit in based on the scenario they're giving you the documents what they can provide income assets etc cetera, etc cetera. correspondent lending is the same thing we are the lender we are the lender so the only thing that you are doing as a correspondent uh originator is you are looking for an investor that will purchase the deal based on the scenario that you are presented with so it's not like brokering at all where i have to know you know i have to know what fgmc does i have to know what you know mr cooper does i have to know what products rocket has with us you price and pricing is going to tell you whether the deal is going to work or not it's also going to give you an idea of which direction it goes in terms of the channels. So if I log into my Optimal Blue account, and I run a search here, let's say I'm, I'm pricing a, just a regular old scenario here, I've got a $190,000 loan, I've got a $200,000 purchase price, So that's going to put me at a 95% LTV. My delivery type, again, I'm telling you guys, this is a vanilla loan. When you actually put the loan in our loan origination system, you'll be able to determine, you know, hey, should I go delegated or non-delegated on here? I'll show you that, show you both examples here, but let's just call this delegated for the sake of, uh, you know, this experiment here. Uh, let's say my representative FICO is a nice 780. My DTI ratio is a 40, let's do 33, just to be on the safe side here. So primary residence for the occupancy, it's a single family. Uh, I'm in Florida, so I'm gonna go with Florida. So I'm in Alachua County. I don't need the property zip here. I'm doing a conforming 30 year fixed. I'm gonna leave the pricing, desired rate and all that open because I want the biggest result I can get back on the pricing. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this as it is. And as you can see, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a list of all of my investors. These are, these are not people that I need to understand whether or not they offer these programs and everything because the pricing engine is telling me that these are people that will purchase the loan. So I can go to any of these guys. I can, you know, look at the uh, the little paper icon here and get the see if there's any overlays or anything I need to know about this particular product. But what I'm really interested in is I'm looking at the rate and I'm looking at the price. Like I said, and I'm trying to see what I can get that's going to be at the highest price that I can possibly find that's still going to satisfy the requirements of the borrower. So here I'm looking at Rushmore. I've got a 5.25 that's at a 100.725 price point, right? So I told you guys 100 is par. So at this point right here, if I took this deal right where it stands right now, I'd be making 0.725 on the back. Why? Because I've hit 100. So that means obsidian is fully covered. So now everything above that is gravy, right? That's what I'm going to make. So now I have the option of going in here and expanding this, and I can take a look at all of the rates that uh, that um, Rushmore is offering for the day here, right? And as I'm going down here and I'm looking at these, now I've got my lock dates here. I've got my 15, 30 day and 45 day lock, depending on what I'm gonna lock this for. And I can go in here and I can look at my rates and see where I'm at, you know? so. If I'm looking at, let's say, for, for example, a 5.5 rate, let's say he's gone somewhere else, he's gotten a 5.7, he's gotten, you know, some other rates from some other borrowers, I can offer him a 5.5 better rate than what he's getting. Already on the back end of this deal, I'm making almost one and a half points. 
Okay, that's not with charging anything up front. So I'm already at a point and a half here on the 30-day lock. And I'm at 1.3 on a 45-day lock, right? Again, because I'm over that 100 mark, so everything else that I'm making here is going to come directly to me. So I can make this 1.458 on the back side if the, if the borrower is happy with this rate. I can lock this in at this. And then if I still want to make some more, let's say, for example, I want to get it to the 2.75, I can charge that additional point and a quarter on the front end of that. The only thing that the borrower is going to see is that I am charging them a point and a quarter when in reality I'm making the 2.75. If I want to charge them two on the front, I can charge them two on the front. Okay. Now let's say, for example, obviously, you know, it's below par. You know, they're, they're looking at a 5.125, it's below par at 99.925. Obviously, they've got to buy that up, so they're going to pay some discount points, right? 0.100, uh, 0.75 in discount points. And then I can still charge them. I can either increase the amount of what I'm charging on the discount points, to include what I'm going to make on the front, or I can still charge them a loan origination fee on the front, right? And again, the only thing that's gonna get disclosed to them is what is on the front of that. So as you can see, as I'm getting into the higher rates here, you know, I'm passing the, 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 I'm passing the, the two point mark here, two and a half points, you know, 2.8, and I can still charge points on the front and still make some money. Now, obviously here, if I'm disclosing this, I can't go past the 3% uh, on a deal like this, right? Because of the ATR rule. So I can't go past that 3%, but I can still make a decent amount of money, better than I would make going out here and brokering this deal, right? So if I wanted to, uh, you know, price this non-delegated, for example, there are a couple of other different things here. Let's say that this is a, uh, let's say it's an investment property, right? And I am going to go non-delegated. And let's say, for example, I'm going to go ahead and, um, let's see here. I'm gonna go expanded guidelines here. And on my expanded guidelines, I am going to go invest through DSCR. All right, I'm going to change this uh, loan amount. Let's make this, let's go to 150. All right. So same circumstance here, as you can see, based on the scenario, I'm seeing which investors are willing to purchase the loan. I'm seeing what the rate is. I'm seeing what the price is. Again, if I'm looking at a 6.75 on this deal and I wanna go in here with Quicken and see what else I could possibly get on this. Um, above that, I can look here on the 45 day, 6.87, making a half a point or whatever. But again, still having the option to go ahead and charge points on the front and make up that difference there. Now, I could do the same thing um, if I decided that I wanted to go into Loan Sifter and price this, I've, I've automatically got my 2.75 built in there. So I can go wholesale here. And let's do the same scenario. Let's make this uh, 190. All right, and we're going to say this is Florida again. Sure. 
right? I can go fees in if I want to. In other words, if I don't want to, you know, disclose, uh, you know, underwriting fees or whatever, I can do this fees in if I wanted to. I can do go borrow or pay if I need to on this deal. But let's just do it the standard uh, scenario here and see what we come up with on this. So, yep, we'll leave that at 30. Let's submit this. And again, you can see that, you know, here, my my rates are not as good. And, you know, I'm at the 2.75 comp here. Right? But the rates aren't any better. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm getting a better deal going out here and brokering this than I would get if I did this correspondent. And on the correspondent side, I have the opportunity to make a lot more money at the same rate that I'm making here, going with Penny Mac on the exact same deal. Everybody else, as you can see, the deal is pretty much underwater. You know, so they're not going to make that kind of money on on this deal. But that's the difference between correspondent and brokering is that with the correspondent, you have the opportunity to go to the, the borrower and, you know, I'm a kind of guy, like I said, I don't typically sell rate to people. I, you know, I, I always use the analogy when you go to buy a car, you go to a Porsche dealer, you see the Porsche you want to buy. You're not going to sit there and ask the guy, you know, what's the rate on, on, you know, this deal? It's, you know, what's the monthly payment? Can I afford the monthly payment? Yes, I can afford the monthly payment. So I'm driving this Porsche off the lot, you know, with, with purchases, especially with first time home buyers and everything else. They're looking at, hey, this was what I was paying in rent. Now I'm going to purchase. Hey, look, I'm paying less on my P&I and everything else than I was paying on my rent. I can afford it. This is my dream house. You're not going to let rates go in between you and purchasing the house that you want to buy, right? Eventually, you know, people come back and six months down the road, they realize, hey, I can get a better rate. You know, maybe I'll refinance, but you never want to put yourself in a situation where the rate is so good that there's not an opportunity to come back and, and hit them up for a refinance later on. You know, so those are things that, you know, you learn in the business when you get out there and you sell and everything. But I wanted you guys to be able to see this because I wanted you to understand the options on the comp and, and how good they are when you are um you know when you are uh basically going on the correspondent delegated or non-delegated route you're going to make a lot less money you're not having fees taken out that's the other thing on on the wholesale right and everybody that's worked for a broker knows this that 2.75 by the time they nickel and dime you on fees you know you, you got to pay for a point or or encompass you got to pay your mentoring fees you got to pay all this now all of a sudden that 2.75 is looking more like a point right we have minimal fees so if you broker with us you're going to get the 2.75 we're only going to take out 12.95 or 20 percent of that whichever one is the greater of the two there is a 4.95 processing fee that goes to the borrower and then you pay a QC fee of 250 and that's it. And then everything else you get to keep. So, you know, here, it, you know, it, and it, you're doing one or two loans with us, you know, you're easily, you know, clearing that, that probably between 15 to $20,000 a month mark, you know, just on minimal loans. We have loan officers doing three loans a month, making $30,000 or better a month you know, on three deals. You're never gonna do that brokering. You're never gonna do that anywhere else, making 2.75 and having these brokers eat away at your margins. So so we just don't do that. Like I said, the comp plan is, your, is, you know, we don't have the comp plan. You decide what you wanna charge, what you wanna make, you make the rate work, you make the deal work. And if you can't make it work, you can come to us in upper management, say, hey, you know, I need to shave 25 bips off of this. You know, what can we do to make this deal work for my borrower? And again, with all that money that you're making, you have the opportunity to give them, you know, lender credits, do a bunch of other creative things that you probably couldn't do brokering. So, um, all right, so let's go back to this.
So again, the proprietary pricing is not as good. Again, the margins aren't as great on the non-delegated side. And the reason why is because most of our non-delegated investors really want you to broker because they know they make better money when you broker. The margins aren't, you know, aren't built in. But the good thing is, again, no compensation plan as I showed you. Uh, you could choose any lender to disclose. They will underwrite, price, and close. Um, you could price it in our pricing engine. You could charge the borrower front and back end compensation just like you can on the delegated. The borrower is not aware compensation is not disclosed, and you're in charge of lock and maintaining the lock with the investor. So you lock through our lock desk. Our lock desk is really good. You know, they'll let you know, hey, your lock's getting ready to expire. You might want to, you know, throw a couple more uh, days on this lock. You know, that's the one thing about correspondent lending that's different. You know, when you broker, you get paid right away. Correspondent lending, it's a warehouse line. We fund it. The investor has to buy it. During that period of time, they're sitting in the warehouse, the file has to remain locked. So we talk to you guys when we bring you on board and we train you. We we sort of give you the strategies for doing that. And, you know, that way you can factor in, hey, should I lock this for 30 days? Should I lock this for 45 days? Um, you know, you'll get to know those things as you learn correspondent lending. So again, the wholesale broker channel. Uh, Everything going through that investor compensation is set at 2.75. Um, there is that that is the comp plan on those. Just so that you're aware. And again, because we are a correspondent lender, we have the ability to lower our broker price into a fixed amount. So don't let anybody fool you. All pricing for wholesale brokering is the same for every lender. As I said, by law, the max comp is 2.75 so they can't change that our compensation on those is simple we charge you a flat fee of 12.95 per file with 20 percent of the compensation amount this only on wholesale don't forget on on delegated non-delegated you're not seeing anything coming out of your money um and then a quality control fee of 295 and the only reason that we even charge all of this is because obviously with with wholesalers you can't factor that into pricing like you can with correspondent so we have to do that but we want to make sure that we are still giving you the max that you can make as a broker even though we would prefer that you go correspondent because again we are a lender products so we offer pretty much the full gamut of everything I've got the listing of the products here, but there's really not much that we don't do. Um, if you have products that you need, you know, specific DPAs, um, those require us to be signed up with nonprofit agencies such as Chowan, along with state and county guidelines. Um, it's a delegated and it is not offered by the broker or proprietary side. So we do have DPA programs that are available. Um, they are limited by state. They're state-run programs in a lot of situations, but we do have um, we do have uh, lenders that do offer those, and we also have zero-down FHAs. So, in lieu of the uh, in lieu of sending somebody on a DPA program, they can do a zero-down FHA with us. Okay, no upfront costs on that. We have a few lenders that do that. It's a really great program, very easy to get into. Um, we have FICO scores down to 500. Again, on VAs and FHAs, we can do manual underwrites with one of ours. We have fix and flip loans available up to four units. We do not do commercial. A lot of people um, come to us and the first thing they do is they hit me up with a commercial deal. We do not do commercial. We do have uh, people that we can refer commercials to. And we are going to be within the next couple of weeks, probably adding um, a full reverse mortgage um, division to the company as well. So that you'll have the opportunity to do those. And as everybody that's done reverse mortgages know, there's a lot better compensation on those than um, than forward mortgages. So.
Now, if you're coming over to us and you're wanting to start a branch, uh, branch compensation. So basically, we have a higher margin for our branch managers. So if you're coming over and you're in the state where you're required to start a branch or you just say, hey, I've got a bunch of loan officers I want to bring over from my current uh, lender and I want to put them under me and start a branch, you are able to do that. Branches can pretty much set their own margins, their own comp of what they want to make on the branch overhead. We don't have any built-in... Um, fees in there for that we give you a bank account to handle your payroll so we deposit all of your money into that account um, and you go ahead and you handle your own payroll you pay your own people you bring in your own people you can hire your own processor we, we still do the underwrites um, so you know we're not open to uh, underwriting we may be in the future but we have three underwriting teams now currently and so um, we prefer that you allow us to continue to do the underwriting um, bringing on loan officers we actually do have recruiters so you have the opportunity to recruit for yourself if our recruiters recruit for you they get a 10 bips margin on every loan officer that they bring in and every deal that that loan officer brings in in perpetuity so if you don't want to spend that you know you can jump on indeed uh recruit your own people bring your own people that way otherwise um our recruiters will go ahead and do that for you uh can i use the dba or trade name yes you can you can't um, operate as a separate entity in other words you can't run an llc and everything because we are not a broker so everything has to be in Obsidian's name. You can't draw docs under an LLC, for example. So you can be a DBA or a trade name, but everything is still going to be, uh, you know, basically disclosed in Obsidian's name. Again, payroll, you can set up your own payroll company. We set you up with a bank account. We deposit all of your uh, commissions in that account. Any fees that you do for your processing and everything, and you pay those out. Are there production minimums? No, there are no production minimums. We would like you to be, um, you know, productive within 60 days of joining us, but we're not going to throw you out the door if you're not producing loans. Some people we understand, you know, this is a part-time thing. They're learning the business. Um, maybe they're doing one or two loans a year. Who knows? Um, we are not going to tell you that, you know, you have to produce 10 loans a month or one or two loans a month. Again, we want you guys to focus on referrals we want you to go out there and sell yourself do some deals with some realtors you know get out there um, in your communities and sell loans but we're not going to set a minimum for you uh, what are obsidian's requirements for the branch we adhere to what the state requirements are so we don't charge you a fee for your branch the only fees that you pay are the fees that the mls charges you for setting up a branch in the state and then the only other requirement that we have, which is not our requirement, but it is the NMLS's requirement that if you are multi-licensed, so in other words, you're licensed in Florida, South Carolina, you know, North Carolina, and you want to start a branch in Florida, you have to convert the other active licenses to a branch or mark them as an active. You have to be a branch in every state. If you're a branch in one, you have to be a branch in every state that you're in. So for some people, you know, that can get expensive, especially if you're not doing a lot of origination in the other states. All right, so another cool feature that we have at Obsidian is called our transition desk. So we're licensed in 32 states, and when you join us, we basically assign you two roles in our loan origination system. You're assigned the role of a loan officer assistant and a loan officer. So because of that, if you have a lead, let's say, for example, that comes up in North Carolina and you're licensed only in Florida, we will put you on that loan as a loan officer assistant. We'll put a Carolina licensed loan officer on that loan as the loan officer of record or sponsor. You work that loan as a loan officer assistant because you are licensed, you are able to talk to the borrowers and all the other stuff and you are going to make the full commission. You're gonna pay the uh, loan officer that signed disclosures and doing all that work a 595 fee, but you get to keep everything else you make. So literally you can take leads in any of the 32 states that we are licensed in, work on those, 
and make almost a full commission that you would make um, as if you were licensed. So that's a really big incentive for a lot of folks um, that join us that are spending massive amounts on lead programs. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up to your attention, it's something uniquely that we do as well. All right, so let's talk about the technology a little bit, right? So um, we give you a lot. We give you a lot for free. Um, everybody always asks, hey, is there a fee to be on Obsidian? We have a flat fee that you pay as a, a loan originator. It's $75 a month. That fee is not payable until you've been with us for three of um, three or four months, right? we want you to be productive if you decide hey you know what i want to pay my you know 750 or 850 or whatever um up front what we'll do is we'll take that out of your first commission so we'll wait until you have a deal we'll take that out for the entire year and you don't have to sweat that headache anymore otherwise you know we we charge you the 75 bucks the 75 bucks is a compliance fee by the way it is not charging you for any software so we are not charging you for lending pad. We're not charging you for optimal blue. We're giving you surefire CRM, which is $150 a month. If you go and buy it off shelf, we're giving you that completely 100% free. You're not paying a dime for that. Uh, we have top of mind, which is automated marketing, it's drip campaigns and everything else. We give you that totally free. It's fully integrated into our lending pad. So it basically sends emails out to your borrowers. If say, for example, your borrower did a purchase and six months later, the market changes and the rate drops on that particular person, because we are integrated with Optimal Blue through that, it will send an email to your borrower and say, hey, the rates dropped, you know, would you like to consider refinancing? It does all of that stuff, it sends them Christmas cards, you know, it sends them birthday wishes. So. All of that we're giving you for free. I'm going to show you guys that real quick just so you can see all of the value that's in there. And then as far as lead sources, we do not provide free leads. We do have leads that come in via the website. So if a lead comes in in your state and it comes in via the website, we will assign that to your account executive, your account executive. If they see that you're a loan officer in there, they're going to give you that lead. They're going to give you that lead if you're producing. You know, if you're not doing anything, if you're sort of just uh, hanging around, um, you know, parking your uh, license over there, they see you haven't really done anything, they're not going to give you that. But if you're productive, they're going to give you the leads that we get coming in. So those will come to you. Those are going to be free. Um, we do vet our lead sources to give you the best bang for your buck. So in other words, if we have deals with Flowify, if we have deals with Lead Pops or anybody, we get that price reduced. We have Obsidian pricing for those. So you are not going to pay full dollar for those if you decide to go with either of those programs. And we do offer a lot. We're adding lead programs all the time. We're going to be adding trigger leads. Um, we have some interesting things going on with some realtors that we're, we're thinking about working on a, a realtor program with Zillow um, that's going to be able to provide you guys with the opportunity to um, do some leads through Zillow with a realtor partner. Um, but lending pad, if you're not familiar with lending pad, it is one of the fastest growing loan origination systems in the United States. We were one of the first 45 original customers of lending pad. Um, they are now well over 250. They have every, everything is fully integrated in here. So when you actually go into a loan, And this is probably not a good one because this one already sold. So let me go back and find a better one for us here. Sorry, my internet's running a little bit slow there. All right. So let's go into this one here. Yeah, one of the really good features about uh, Lending Pad as well is that you do have live chat with their support team. So if you have any support questions, they offer uh, free training 
classes through their portal as well. So you can sign up for weekly live trainings to them. We do training as well, um, usually on Wednesdays and Thursdays of every week. Um, but you'll see here, you know, when you go into LendingPad, it looks like a lot. It's, it's fully browser-based, so it will work on any device. You can run a LendingPad on your cell phone. It will render itself to a mobile app. You can use it on a tablet. So if you need to go meet a borrower somewhere to take an application, you can do that on your tablet. It'll work on your laptop. Everything is fully integrated. So when you come into the Actions tab here, you can do everything here with the click of a button. That's all you do. If I want to pull a credit report, I click on the Send button. Send, click Send Request, I get a credit report. If I need to run AUS fully integrated, I can run AUS here. I can send a pre-approval letter with the click of a button. You know, so I can preview one, take a look at what it's going to look like, automatically going to render it as a PDF for me. And if I want to send that to the borrower, I can send that directly from inside of here just by going to the send option here. As you can see, it attaches it, creates a nice little email. You have the email editor, you can edit, you can do whatever you need to do there, but every single feat function is integrated in here. We even have pricing and locking in here, so you can actually go out to Optimal Blue, run your scenarios and stuff there, but when you're ready to actually lock the loan, you can actually do that right here within uh, Lending Pad just by clicking on the Get Price button. And that's going to automatically integrate directly in here. So you'll see you have your delegated and non-delegated options here. I click on Get Products. It's going to bring me the same exact thing. And I can go in here, pick my uh, pick pick my investor that's going to purchase the loan, and then just lock it from right here. So all of that is fully integrated in as well. Um, you're going to get that. We're going to give you Optimal Blue, so you can price just like I did. Surefire, I'm going to show you guys some, a little bit of Surefire real quick here. If you're not familiar with Surefire, Surefire was uh, recently acquired by the company that owns Optimal Blue, which is Black Knight. Surefire was made just specifically for the mortgage industry. So as you can see here, when you're in your Surefire portal, and again, we give you this totally for free, it manages all of your deals and everything. It fully integrates in the lending pad, so it brings your entire uh, pipeline into here. So you can see all of your pending tasks, you can see your contacts, your leads. We have, it offers thousands of free flyers. I mean, literally thousands and thousands of flyers. One of the things that I love about it for, uh, you know, in integrating with your, your realtor partners is they have this thing, this product called single property sites. So you can actually contact a realtor and say, hey, let's partner on an open house. It is going to allow you with a couple of clicks to create a web page for their opening. And I mean for their listing and it'll create a real live link that you can actually uh, send your that they can send their borrowers to. And this is it right here. This is the this is the website that you create for the realtor. OK, it gives them the menu, gives them the price, has all of this great stuff tied directly into the MLS. All the interior pictures and everything you can do this it's co-branded for both you and the agent it's got its own built-in mortgage calculator here and then it has the loan officer down at the bottom so and the great thing about these is if the property goes under contract lending pad is going uh surefire is going to tell you so at that point, you can email out to the borrower, I mean to the uh, real estate agent and say, hey, that property that we co-branded on, I see it went under contract. When am I getting the loan? You know, so, so these are all options that we give you guys completely free of charge just for being with us. And then the lead sources and everything, they come through our uh, intranet. I'm gonna show you that real quick here. I know we're running against the clock here, so. Let me get through the rest of this here. We covered lending pad for you, covered optimal blue for you, just covered surefire and top of mind for you. So let's talk about the intranet. The intranet, literally when you join us, you are going to get an invite to our intranet. Our intranet has pretty much everything that you need as a loan officer. 
We have our onboarding. You can order your business cards through here. We have a program called the Social Media Ambassador Program. This is a program that's very much like a multi-level marketing program where you can go out and recruit people. You go out, recruit them. You get paid for bringing them on to Obsidian. And not only do you get paid for bringing them on to Obsidian, you get a percentage of their loans for the full year that they're there. And we let you go three deep on that. So if that loan officer recruits a loan officer, recruits a loan officer, you're going to get compensated on all of those loan officers that they bring in. So if you're new to the business, but you know people that are interested, this is a good way to start making money right off the bat, especially if you know people that are good producers, you can make that money. We do have health care available to you. You can sign up for that. There is a... Uh, no open enrollment period or anything. You just come to the internet, you click on that little graphic right there, and you can sign up. Um, again, we have tons of training. So we have training broken down into different sections. We have basic lending pad, we have social media training, we have loan tr LO training, we have podcasts, and then the mortgage loan origination training hub is all of our own training that we have recorded over a period of time. So there are literally hours and hours and hours of training available to you that we already have procured here or that we have conducted locally here. And this is all specific to Obsidian. So all of these training programs and classes are going to be things that you will learn about um, as you are working here and they will give you a leg up in getting productive right off the bat. So we have credit repair training. We have pretty much everything, structuring self-employment income, all of those different things. Um, again, social media program, if you decide that you want to participate in that, we have the brochures, all of the collateral, logo formats, social media ads. We have uh, tutorials on how to get out there and market the company so you can bring people on and make money doing that. And then again, like I said, we have lead generation programs available to you. So Surefire, um, obviously we give that free to you, um, but we have other programs. We have lead pops available, so you can come here, um, sign up for lead pops after you watch their videos. We have another program called Every Mile Pro. Every Mile Pro gives you named leads, so you can sign up with them. They give you 20 leads a month. These are targeted leads. You pick the cities, you pick the state. Uh, if you go with option B, they give you 25 leads a month. Uh, there's a three-month commitment with them if you decide to go that route. Um, and they will give you the pricing. You can contact Troy there. He'll let you know what it costs. We also have Lender Homepage, um, and we're constantly adding more. So um, we have Loansify, for example. We're constantly adding to our lead generation, so you'll always have options. They're all very, very cost effective. We're going to be doing something with Zillow, as I mentioned. Um, so those are all tools that we make available to you free of charge. Experience the account executive. So every loan officer is assigned an account executive to assist you with structuring your loans, training scenarios to get you producing and making money. You, unlike other brokers that we all know, we do not charge you mentorship fees. These people are salaried, they are paid, they are there just to serve you. You are not paying them a dime, they are not taking anything off of you, they are just there, you're assigned to them, they work as like your manager, and you come to them with any questions you have, any problems, getting your loan structured, they're gonna help you through all of your deals. So, you know, if you're coming in with referral business and you don't know what you're doing, just go ahead, get the referrals, bring them in. Your AE is going to work to get you up to speed, but he's also going to help you get these loans closed so you can start making some immediate money. So we don't want you guys to be thinking, hey, you know, I don't really know correspondent lending. I'm really worried about signing up because, you know, I have some deals or some people I know, but I don't think I'm going to get any help. Um, we are here to help you. You'll find that we, you know, mostly all of our uh, AEs have at least 20 years experience or better. They're top producers. They all know how to make money. So you're going to get assigned a dedicated person when you come on board. And again, that's no charge to you. So what is the one thing that we've learned here? Obviously with Obsidian, you have options. So in the industry, we know having options, especially with the market the way it is right now, 
you cannot be handcuffed to just one option. We have three channels we're giving you. You have the ability to maximize your compensation, not lose money. We hope that you choose Obsidian as your employer. We look forward to having you contact one of our recruiting staff to discuss partnering with us. If you are interested in getting a hold of a recruiter, um, let's talk about what the next steps would be. Um, you'll, you'll contact a recruiter uh, to schedule your one-on-one -on -one interview. You may have been invited to this webinar by a recruiter, and that's fine. You just want to get a hold of them and say, hey, I'm ready to move forward. If you haven't been contacted by a recruiter, the next sl slide will tell you how to do that. Uh, contract time. If we decide that we want to move forward with you, we are going to send you a copy of the contract to e-sign. It will be either a branch or a loan originators contract, depending on which contract you want to sign. Uh, the onboarding team process will then start. So once the contract's completed, we'll contact you to request a sponsorship through the NMLS. We'll schedule you for the orientation. It's a four hour orientation class. Um, it starts at one o'clock in the afternoons on Mondays. It goes for about four hours. We teach you everything you need to know. Part of it, uh, for the first uh, two hours is just talking about Obsidian and basic concepts of uh, correspondent lending. And then the last two hours is actually walking you through originating, pricing a loan, using LendingPad, all of that. So we go through that in a lot of detail for you. And again, we're going to help you. If you have pending loans, even if you're not on board with us if, and you've got loans, you've got referrals and you, you, know, you want to walk in the door uh, and say, hey, I've got loans closed and I'm going to start making some money, we are going to help you with those. We'll help you get those referrals, convert those over to loans, get a licensed loan officer working on it until you're onboarded and then still get you paid out on those. All right, so if you're ready to take that next step with us, um, you can call our main number, which is 833-450-2338 and choose option one. You can speak to a recruiter, so you can either go to obsidianfinancialservices.com forward slash careers and fill out the careers form there, or you can email us at employment at obsidianmortgage.com and we'll be more than glad to go ahead and get you set up and have a recruiter contact you right away. So uh, that's all I have on this presentation. Let me go ahead and jump into the uh, chat here and answer any questions that you guys might have. So how do we get leads? So we covered that a, a little bit um, for you guys. We don't offer leads per se for free. We do get them through the website. We give you those when we have them. If you're actually producing, that's sort of a free reward that you get for being a producer with us. If you're not, you know, we definitely recommend looking into lead pops or some of those others. We do have lead generation training and marketing training um, to tell you how to go out there and generate your own leads. Um, and again, we are looking at a couple of other programs. So we're looking at trigger leads through a couple of the credit bureaus. And we're also looking at potentially doing a partnership with Zillow. So we had a uh, we have our meetings, our, our management meetings every week, and we had a one of our AEs was telling us about a program that he was working on. One of his loan originators was working on with Zillow, which was more cost effective um, than actually going out and buying mortgage loan origination leads from Zillow. So it was costing this loan officer like uh, $200 a month, but he was getting a ton of referrals that way. And, you know, if you guys come on board, we will definitely be more than glad to talk to you guys about that. Fees to the borrower in the LO. So we have the underwriting fees that are going to be charged. The LO has never charged any fees. The LO only pays fees if you broker, right? So if you broker a file, then you're going to pay $12.95 or 20% of your 2.75 goes to Obsidian, right? That's the broker fee. $4.95 processing fee that gets charged to the borrower. And then there's a $2.95 QC fee. That's for us to basically, because we're still responsible for the loan, even if you go out and broker it. So, you know, when we get audited, they still look at all of those loans. So we still have to run quality control on those loans. So those are the only fees. If you are on the correspondent side, you do not see any fees. Again, what you see is what you get on those. 
Um, the borrower fees we have a low, we have a underwriting fee of twelve ninety five. The uh, processing fee I believe is eight ninety five. Right now, those are the fees to the borrower. Uh, list of current states. If you go to the website, uh, Obsidian Mortgage, Obsidian Financial Services dot com or Obsidian Mortgage dot com, there's a states link right there. You can click on that. It'll give you a list of states. The only one that's not on there that has um, just been added is Indiana. Uh, let's see here. Who covers the credit report and AUS cost for each borrower? AUS is covered internally. The credit report, the borrower can pay that for themselves we have a $44 flat fee so whether it's a single or a joint pull it's $44 if they don't want to pay that we do offer soft pulls the soft pull cost is $13 so if they're just you know kicking tires trying to decide hey you know what I want to see what I qualify for uh, or um, you know what I'm making what I'm gonna make on you know uh, or uh, will this deal work for example, um, they could pay the $13. That doesn't put a you know, hard inquiry on their credit report. Um, and they just have to, we, we send them a form, they fill out. That $13, we cannot charge that, just like you can't charge for a rescore as a loan officer. So that gets billed back to the LO, to the loan officers, 13 bucks. The $44, we, we submit a uh, credit card authorization to the borrower. That's to pay for their credit report and their appraisal. All right, so they, they fill that out and you can run that credit through a uh, lending pad just like I showed you. Uh, how long does it take for a new loan officer to start making money on the average? Um, it depends. Honestly, um, we can close loans in as few as 10 days. So, you know, if you have a very well structured file and you know what you're doing, you can make money pretty quickly, you know, within 21 days or less. Um, if you are, especially if you have some referral business that you're bringing over, you know, I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get the referrals. That's really the most important thing that you want to do starting your career. We don't really, you know, worry as much about, you know, how much do you know about correspondent lending or origination or are you going to be stuck? The goal is to get yourself out there, you know, talk to your family, talk to your friends. You know, like I tell people, you know, most the average person has 500 Facebook contacts. So if you're posting something on Facebook, that's hitting your 500, who then may repost to their 500, who then may repost to their 500. So, you know, by the time that's all said and done, you could be sitting at 2.5 million views on a specific list that you sent out. So you want to be proactive in getting referrals right off the bat. You know, we give you guys a lot of collateral when we bring you on board. We, we actually send you a welcome guide that tells you how to go out and get referral business so that you can start working on that. Um, being an experienced person myself, um, I will tell you that your marketing plan or your marketing plan of attack is the most important first step that you take in being a loan officer. You've got to figure out how you're going to market. Am I going to cold call? Am I going to buy lists? Am I going to go to open houses? Am I going to walk in the realtor's offices? Or am I going to spend a few hours a week on social media? And whatever it is that you decide to do, um, you want to make sure that you commit yourself to doing that. Okay, that's the most important thing. If you say, I'm going to do social media, set aside an hour a week to get on social media and do nothing but market your social media okay that's what you want to do that's how you are going to be successful in this business all right so receiving a commission paycheck from the time that a loan funds and goes in the warehouse it is typically three to ten days so three days if the loan is really clean if you've done a good job if the underwriter's done a good job typically um we'll, we will get a wire back in three days the way that our payouts work is we pay out technically we pay out semi-monthly but we don't we pay out every week so if you um have a loan that closes funds and is purchased in the warehouse on a wednesday and we get the wire that Wednesday, you will get paid that Friday. 
if it comes in after Wednesday, you get paid the subsequent Friday. Typically, and we have a really good post-closing department. Our post-closing guy is amazing. He also does our lock desk, but, but he works really hard to keep those lines clean because obviously the, the one incentive we have, Marcelo, is that the longer the loan sits on the warehouse line, that credit is tied up, right? We can't use that money. So, you know, we want to be able to flip our lines at least twice in a month. You know, by averaging 75 to 100 loans a month, that's why we, we're recruiting as heavily as we are. But generally, that cycle is three days. So once the loan funds gets in the warehouse, you're looking at three days for purchase and wire. The most I've ever seen it go is 10 days. Um, and that's if the, um, if the investor finds something or if they're just nitpicking the loan, you know, looking for, for a reason not to purchase because they don't want to send the wire over or they're you know hurting for money or whatever you know who <laughs> knows those folks but yeah generally that's always the that's always the, the time frame so and we do pay out every week we say every two weeks but it's every week so all right guys i've taken you over a little bit here um are there any other questions let me go ahead and put this uh phone number in the chat in case anybody wants to call in and get some and, and, and the recruiters can answer any questions other additional questions you have as well so if you want to talk to a recruiter you know just feel free to go ahead and contact them um they can talk to you about and go through the contract or any other questions that you might have around that um again you can go to obsidian And those are the two links in the chat. And then uh, employment. All right, folks, uh, any other questions?